All right, good morning, everybody. It's uh, still 11.30 here on the West Coast. 2.30 on the East Coast, and let's get right back into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're joining us for the first time, please hit that follow and subscribe if you like the stream. Uh, we're gonna do an unboxing in uh, probably about an hour. We're at uh, actually uh, 12 o'clock noon. So 12 o'clock noon, we're going to do an unboxing of a package I got in the mail today. So we'll see what that's all about. In the meantime, as you can see, huge drop off on the S&P 500. Volatility is off the charts, so the markets are absolutely tanking. Um, get back into here. And what we have going on... Right to the Dow. Dow is now down 30. SP is down 1%. NASDAQ is down uh, almost 3%. So, not a very good day at all. Everything is in the red. NASDAQ absolutely just Tanking, tanking, tanking. Uh, huge downside, huge downside pressure. Not much even in the green at all today. Uh, I think the only thing that is in the green is U.S. oil. Um, and nice pop. And again, as the volatility happens, uh, that's gonna go. That's gonna go. Some of the ones we were watching earlier. One of the ones we talked about was uh, KMPH, pharmaceutical. And uh, that seems to have uh, leveled out here about 50% about up on the day. So it's kind of settled into this consolidation phase over here. Uh, but some of the ones, you know, huge losses today on the downside. Rocket Rocket is down 30% uh, off the open. So it's down $12.45. Workhorse down 9%. Uh, AMC down 4% to 851 Nvidia down $22, which is a little like 4.3%. Huge drop on that one. Palantir down 3%. AMD down 3%, 3.68%. So basically a big sell-off in tech. Anything tech related, uh, may not want to look at your account because it, it's gonna be on the it's gonna be on the downside. And let me uh, lower that music just a little bit because that seems a little bit on the loud side. There we go. And then uh, need to There we go. Um Okay, so uh, again, huge sell off. You got Tesla. You know, is Tesla is, is it starting to bottom out a little bit here? It looks like it is uh, from looking at the, the VIX volatility. But again, volatility today is up huge. And, uh, you know, nine, almost 10% volatility increase for an SP that's basically down 1%. So definitely a little bit of downside pressure going on in the markets. Again, the Dow is down 13, NASDAQ down 332 points, almost 2.5% drop. All that's tech-related. So uh, basically, if you have a question on something going on, something you might own that you want to take a look and see 
what's going on with it in the market. Just everything is just bleeding red today. You know, basically the whole screen is red. And if you look at the heat map, that's going to tell you, you know, what, what's going up today, the financials. Uh, financials are going up. Of course, you know, a lot of the financials uh, don't care if the markets go up or down from the standpoint of if more people are trading, they're going to make more money on, on that kind of stuff. But Google, Microsoft down, Apple down, Google, Facebook, Amazon, Tesla, Walmart's down, Costco's down, uh, J&J, Eli Lilly is down, Netflix is down, Disney is down, uh, AT&T is up a little bit. Um, and they swing right around with uh, Verizon is up, you know, T-Mobile is down, energy, most everything in energy is basically up. Everything that you can see in energy is up. What is that one? What was that? Hold on a second. I saw something. Oh, man, what? I was reading a percentage. Um, I thought something was up like 60%. I was like, holy cow, no. Um, Exxon Mobil, et cetera. So energy, oil, gas, those are all up. The industrials are actually um, going all up a little bit today. You have Honeywell up, 3M up, GE up, ITW, EMR up, uh, ETN, PHCT, CMI. All those are trading up today. All the semiconductors, those are getting hit big time. Again, NVIDIA down 4%. Intel down 1.78, Qualcomm down as well. So just a um, little bit of, a, a, quite a bit of red going on in the market today. Uh, looks like hopefully we've hit a bottom. I know the VIX is look like, looks like it's trading down a little bit now. And the S&P is bouncing back up. Let's take a look at the... What are now being called the meme stocks, um, GME bouncing off the bottom, but again they're they're still up on the day. So as the market recovers, they'll turn around and go up. AMC is down 31 cents, also bouncing off the bottom. Cinemark is up 65 cents, up 2.7 percent, right around there. Uh, pardon me. Always stay hydrated, very important. That was leftover from my lunch, and I have my water bottle. Uh, make sure that you hydrate while you're doing this stuff. Get your legs moving, move around in your chair, stretch, you know, eye exercises, focus on something far off in the distance, blink a bunch of times, all kinds of good little tricks you can do while you're staring at a screen, whether you're at work staring at a screen or, uh, or trading the markets. So Dow just turned positive. Uh, now it's up 36 points. NASDAQ is off of its low of the day. but still down 300, and S&P is down 30. So 2.27% down on the NASDAQ, S&P 500 down 0.8%, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 0.12%. <clears throat> All right, as I talked about earlier, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do something. And let me uh, be right back in one second.
that part's done. All right. So we got this today in the mail. Let's see if we can do this still. Years ago, loading boxes in a truck while going to college. All right, so uh, we're going to unbox that a little bit later, um, probably another 15, 20 minutes or so. So if you want to stick around for that, we'll see what's we'll see what's in the box. And uh, so things are coming back a little bit. Uh, Bitcoin's still up, still about 50600 kind of right where we left it, and $1,600 on the but button for Ethereum. So nice run up in the cryptocurrencies today. Again, Ethereum up 7.5%, Bitcoin up 4.5%. And the interesting thing about Bitcoin and Ethereum is if you were to take a look at a weekly chart and you were to say from November, let's call it right here. It's a date on there. From the 12th of October from the 12th of October, Bitcoin is up 345.99%. So 349 345%. Look at Ethereum. Let's see where that's at. We're at 12 October, right? Three hundred and twenty five percent for Ethereum. So Bitcoin was up three forty five, Ethereum up twenty five. So Bitcoin has outperformed Ethereum by about twenty percent or so. I know the last time I was looking at uh Ethereum, take it down to the one hour here and come back over here. Oops, maybe four hour. There it is. I was looking at different support levels in the past and calling this one at 1245 and then legged up from there, um, which was super nice to see. Um, we talked about. U.S. oil. Oh, let me get rid of the uh, aftermarket activity. Um, talked about U.S. oil. They're up three percent today, up a dollar twenty-two, which is good for that ETF. If you happen to own that one, Rocket. Again, rocketing downwards, all the way down. We're going to go back to a five-minute chart here. Get off of the hourly, but uh, Rocket down twenty-nine, twenty-nine percent today. Uh, KMPH also pulled back, and we talked about that one earlier. And uh, after it, it had a huge run, and then uh, basically looks like it's consolidating around that $13 range. But again, it was all the way up to $18 a share. So GME continuing to do well today, 118. I think that closed on Friday. I want to say 102, right around that range. So um, hey, good for them. AMC down 34 cents today. Cinemark up 52 cents. Uh, Tesla down 18.52. Uh, whoops. Sundial, if you're into the uh, weed stocks, down 6%. This one's been getting. Hammered. Let's see, 11th. Peaked out at the 11th. We'll just call 345. Who cares about that wick all the way up there? Somebody screwed up. So it got all the way up to $4 or so. 396 it looks like. Got up to $3.96 and then. So big, big time loss on that one. Let's see. Since then. Yeah, down 61% since the 11th of February. So you got to be careful about writing what are considered momentum type plays. And anything momentum related is going to be your, um, you know, your Reddit stocks and things of that nature. So just be leery and weary that those could come back to uh, to get you. Okay, chip stocks, AMD. AMD is down 3.58%. Intel is down... 
two percent down dollar 27 at 59 again it broke that 60 dollar area uh amd we'll see if it can hold this 80s um this 81 dollar mark here looks like it's it, it's struggling a little bit and the market's starting to turn negative again too uh and then nvidia again just the just bleeding 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 over the last three four days if you look at the hour if you look at this from pretty much from when they reported earnings um but from the 16th of february they ran all the way up to right about 614 dollars a share and they've come all the way down to uh oops down down 15 percent so that's a big big chunk of change there big chunk of change All right, let's see if there's, uh, let's see. It's like the Senate trims parts of Biden's $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief bill before votes. It's interesting. All right, so back big time red again on the market. Uh, Dow Jones down a couple points. NASDAQ down 330 points now. S&P down 35. And everything just continues to uh, fall off. I, I think the worry here on something like NVIDIA is as it's breaking through this 513 area, look out below because your next step down would be 493 or so. It's got It's got to hold this area right here. Pretty much right where it's at right now. Um, if it was going to bounce, this is where it needs to bounce. But that doesn't look uh, doesn't look like it wants to do that. You're chewing your bum. All right. So we're coming up on power hour. And let's take a look at the crypto markets. You got Bitcoin. Bitcoin is up. Again, anytime you see the markets go down. She loves that squeaky toy, don't you? Don't you? Huh. What you doing? Have to give the dog attention to. She's good. She's a good dog. Aren't you? Yeah. And belly rubs. Scratch your ears. Okay. All right. So Bitcoin uh, currently, uh, that's up about 5% today. And Ethereum just continues its run above 1600 up to um, up 8.35% today. So they're doing pretty good. What? What do you want? What do you want? Oh, you. Want... So this is the time where she wants her hugs. So she is about a year and a half old, altogether here. So let's see. I'm gonna find a spot for you. Wait. Uh, sit. Sit. Shake. Okay. Up. That's where she likes to be. It's just a big lap dog. Aren't you? Aren't you? 
Let's see her this way. What? 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 Come on, this side. There you go. What's everybody doing? What's that? What? Okay, okay. You a good dog? You a good dog? Yes, you are. Okay, here, put your head down. There you go. She just wants to be hugged. Okay, back to work. Okay. She got her dog hugs. All right, Ethereum up 8.5%. Bitcoin up 5%. GameStop up a percent. How are the movers today? And KMPH is the one that uh, really took off today. Again, it was up over 80% and has pulled back about 40% since since that time frame. So off of its highs, almost four dollars and thirty cents off of it off of its high of the day. Okay, let's take a quick look. Again, the VIX uh, back on the 32nd. It's just all kinds of volatility. We, we were just at almost 10% volatility up here, which is super, super high for a one day move. And uh, it, it, it's pulled back. So when you see something like that, then you're going to see what you see down here on the bottom. You're going to see the S&P 500 start to creep up. So if, if we found a bottom here at this, you know, $3,800 level for the S&P 500, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully that's the case. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So I do want to check and see um, if there's any news. So Dow is up 61 points right now, and the S&P 500 is down 26 points. And as that composite is down 281, so bouncing off that bottom where it's down about 330 at its worst, I think. So, let's see what else we got here. They're calling it the incredible shrinking stimulus. Biden tightens $1,400 stimulus check. Stimulus check income limits amid pressure from moderate Dems. Americans earning 75% or less would still receive the fully promised $1,400 payment. So, if you're making less than $75,000 a year, you're probably going to get the $1,400 payment. The House version of the bill would also send the $1,400 payments to individuals earning $75,000 or below, but the money would phase out slower with the eligibility cutoff at $100,000 again for individuals and $200,000 per year for couples. Uh, most major cities, if you're making $100,000 a year, you can't even buy a house. So let's see what's in here. A 
Lawmakers are racing to send the legislation to Biden's desk before March 14th, when more than 11 million Americans will lose their jobless aid. When two key federal jobless aid programs created a year ago under the CARES Act and extended in the $900 billion relief package, Congress passed in December lapse. So March 14th is kind of the date, the, the be all end all date that we're looking for as far as the unemployment stuff ending. Um, the problem comes in is that we're already at March 3rd. And um, so you're looking at a week and a half, two weeks. Yeah, a week, a week and a half. The 14th is on, ends on a Sunday. Boy, you, you'd think they would have made that, well, Sunday because it's the beginning of the week, I guess. So uh, a week and a half for them to, to decide if they're going to pass that, sign it. And we'll see who's got the real control in the Senate as far as the moderates. Um, what's that guy from uh, Mansion from West Virginia? Hmm. And that's it on the stimulus for today, it looks like, because it's already 3 o'clock on the East Coast. All right. Dow is starting to climb back a little bit, up 52 on the day. Again, looking at what's actually up, you have energy, energy up, you have cyclicals, uh, you have banks up, you have select drug manufacturers up, medical devices all down. Diagnostic research down. Industrials are up, and that, that's pretty much what's carrying the Dow. You have Honeywell, 3M, GE all up. Look at the, um, let's see what else we got up here. We got travel. Tesla down 2.5%, Amazon down 2.3%, Google down 2.63%, Microsoft down, Apple down, NVIDIA down, Qualcomm down, Intel down, AMD down. JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo all up. Pfizer up, j and J's down. So again, their news came out on that they got emergency use for their vaccine on Saturday. So, again, it's another one of those sell on the news type things. Uh, and now it's pulling back a little bit off of after after going up quite aggressively. All right, precious metals. It's uh, 12 o'clock on the button. So let's take a look at what's going on in precious metal markets. We have exactly an hour till the market closes in New York. Silver, silver is down now, uh, 50, 56 cents. Platinum going down 29% or $29 to $11.75 an ounce. And again, these are spot prices. And palladium down $7. So 0.29% on palladium, down 2.45% on platinum, and silver down 2%. So that brings us to our unboxing for the day. And again, it, as some of you know, um, you know, I don't just dabble in the stock market. I don't just dabble in real estate. I have about um, four to five different income streams that I rely on. And so this is one of the reasons why I'm able to come at you twice a day during what the markets are doing. So we're going to do an unboxing right now. So if you're watching this in replay, you'll see what, uh, what was delivered today. This is my handy dandy letter opener also known as a box cutter and where this is from this came UPS about uh, a couple hours a couple hours ago paper What are all these? Hmm. 
What could they be? What could they be? Let's take a look. Um, how can I? I don't know how I can do this. Okay. Okay, so the first one we have, uh, this is actually going to be a platinum coin. You can see that. And this is the U.S. Mint 2018 preamble to the Declaration of Independence Platinum Proof Coin Life. This is United States Mint 2019 preamble to the Declaration of Independence Platinum Proof Coin, Liberty, one ounce coin. And this is the 220 preamble to the Declaration of Independence. So let's take a look at what those are. And we'll just take out the, 2000, the 2021 here, or 2020. So again, this is uh, something I bought directly from the U.S. Mint. Comes in a nice box. Certificate of Authenticity. Nice drawing on the back. Again, also comes with a separate presentation box. Well, that's neat. Look at that. Gorgeous. Good looking coin. Now sometimes these are a little hard to come out, but this one came out pretty easy there. So again, this one is the 2020. And that's the West Coast Mint Proof 2020 Preamble to the Declaration of Independence Platinum Proof Coin. So again, these are uh, $1,695 each now on the U.S. Mint website. Just a just a great presentation. Awesome box. Certificate of Authenticity. Cover box. And then a very, whoops, trying to get it in there. And then a very nice sleeve comes with it as well. Okay. So we got the thousand let's see here if I can do this those are all three coins today 2018 2019 2020 platinum coins I already have the 2021 and that one uh, was released last month so that one already came so what else do we have in here now these are this is the one this is the one I've been waiting for This is the U.S. Mint American Eagle one-ounce silver-proof coin. I 
nice cover box. Again, another certificate of authenticity. Okay. 99.9% silver. What's interesting about this coin is this is the last one. Now, check out this presentation box because this is this is something I wasn't expecting and I don't know remember it from the website. But look at that. Incredible. The actual presentation box has an eagle on it. Beautiful coin. Wow. Nice presentation box opening. And there it is. So this coin, silver dollar, and they're sometimes hard to get out. There we go. This is the last one. Oops, let me get in front of my face so it focuses on that. I'm trying to find my eye. With the Heraldic Eel Eagle Reverse. So this is the 2021, the first one of this year. One ounce silver dollar proof coin from the US Mint. And it has a W on there as well, as well as a designer. And this is the last coin they're designing with this design. They've been using the same design for 35 years. This is the last one. This is the last issue of this coin. Okay. Just a beautiful, beautiful presentation box. Mm. Love these things. And again, nice box comes in. Certificate of authenticity. Labeled box cover. As well as, hey, what do I do with it? Okay. Doesn't come in a sleeve inside of a box like the Platinums do. Just comes in a box. Um, so here's what I did. We we're talking about different income streams, right? We're talking about how to take you know, take money that you make and, and put it into different assets and create different income streams and different hedges against the market. So, you know, silver has been going up quite a bit, but for a collector or for someone that is looking um, for an investment, even if it's short term or not, as a hedge against the inflation, you know, the US dollar is backed by nothing. You don't get anything. You hand somebody a piece of paper at a store, and you get a, a product for it. Um, I bought 12 of them. So this is 12 US Mint $1 silver coins, the last issue of this coin. They changed the design. The new design will come out in the middle of the summer and so um, when the new design comes out I'll try and get uh, you know a few of those at least one we'll see if they limit how many they do uh, initially they were not limiting the sale of these coins however within eight minutes this coin sold out on the US Mint site so completely sold out within the first eight minutes that, that it was issued you can't get them anymore um, I have someone that, that if they, they will offer them again, okay, they will offer them again also probably out of different mints, San Francisco, 
Philadelphia, etc. Uh, but this one, these are known as first strikes. Anything that is delivered within the first 30 days of a coin being issued. This was issued on March 11th. It just came, or I'm sorry, February 11th. It was just delivered today. It took the U.S. Mint almost a month to get these delivered to me. Okay, but these are all first strike, so I can send them off and get them graded, and uh, they could potentially be worth more. But I also um, have my receipt as well, um, so we'll we'll see if I decide to do that or not. But these are already going for uh, quite a pretty penny. If you were to type in uh, 2021 silver dollar proof US. And we'll just throw that into DuckDuckGo. And let's see here. Uh, let's go eBay. Okay, uh, market's recovering just a little bit. Dow is up 83 points, and Nasdaq is up to, is down 272 still, and the S&P is down 25. Here we go. Okay, so these coins on the U.S. Mint site are um, for proof. This is uh, brilliant uncirculated. That's not a proof. I thought I typed in proof for a search. Let's try it. Search here. Um, American Eagle. Silver dollar. Proof. Okay. So these, when you could get them, they were uh, seventy-three dollars on the on the Mint website. So they're already selling one thirty-nine. Here's a guy selling one of these, one of these right here that I bought on release day for $73. Somebody selling for $375 already. They know it's the last design. Here's, you know, 193, 199, 150, you know, confirmed order, confirmed order. That means they don't even have them yet. Again, mine, I ordered them on the 11th. Pretty much I had my bag at the U.S. Mint ready to go because I had my three platinum coins already in the bag ready to go. And on February 10th, those platinum coins were uh, $16.45. Woke up on the 11th and they were all the way up to um, $16.95. So I had to pay $150 more for the three platinum coins. Wait for 9 o'clock Pacific. 12 noon Eastern time for the mint to release them. And it's basically hitting refresh, refresh, refresh on the website, waiting for it to load. Immediately saw it, clicked on it, picked a number. I picked 12 different coins, put in my bag, already had my credit card loaded into the mint website. Press the order, confirmed, boom, I was out of there. I then went on to social media to say, hey, these are available, go get them online. Um, uh, relative of mine that also buys silver and is in the precious metals emails me back and says hey they're sold out and so with, by the time i had purchased and had my order confirmed by the u.s mint they were sold out and so nobody else i know was able to get these things which is why they're selling for the premium but i i think that's nothing um i think that uh and there's a difference between brilliant uncirculated and proof a proof coin it's going to be super shiny stuff, and the uh, brilliant uncirculated is just going to be a regular silver dollar, uncirculated, which means it wasn't sent to a bank. Okay, um, and it, it's you know those are going for forty three, but the proofs here is one thirty nine. Again, brilliant uncirculated, brilliant uncirculated. Let's see. I wonder if I can sort. Uh, let's have a little fun with this. Oh, only only six results. So this, this person here, check this out. Confirmed order, but he doesn't show an actual picture of the coin. 
But again, it's, it's, it's just a gorgeous coin. Look at that. So let me let me show you. The the internet does not do it justice. If I can get one out. The way they put these in here, it's just really difficult box. Okay. And I'm not going to take it out of its of its little home here. But if you, if you look at that. Look at how shiny that is. So that's the difference between a proof coin and a brilliant uncirculated. With a proof coin, you're going to get that super, super shiny on the coin. And uh, I'll take a closer look at look at these coins, and uh, maybe take a couple pictures of them and, and post them up. But um, you know, there, there's somebody. He's saying he's got two available. I guess I could do. I guess I could do the uh, do the same thing. I hate eBay. Um, I, I would caution buying something like this off of eBay. You might be better picking it up locally at an LCS, what's known as a local coin store, and make a safer purchase that way, even if you uh, pay a premium. Okay, so let's get back into it. Uh, let's see, Tesla. And so if, if you have any other questions on on uh, the silver market or uh, stock, feel free to post a, ch a question down in chat. We'll be happy to look at that again. You know, the big, the big win today that I got from the Mint, again, I've been waiting for these. These have, were ordered almost a month ago. They were ordered all the way back on February 11th. And what we got was, again, this is the, uh, this is the silver, one ounce silver that came today. 12 of them. And then I got three more one ounce platinum coins from the US Mint. Now the platinum coins, those have gone up another $150 a coin. So they're $200 higher than what I bought. Those are now 16, or um, I'm sorry, 18.45 I believe is what these go for on the US Mint. But the platinum coins are available to buy. So those you can, you can, you can get those. Um, and those are and those are available. Oops. And that was a two, 2018 one uh, that we showed you there. But just that silver coin, oh, just a gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful coin that the mint came up with. And again, this is the last design. So new design comes out this summer, and people are already getting twice what they paid for them so 100 percent profit I, I, I could take all 12 of these and double it my profit and hope to somehow get 12 more at cost and it's like i got 12 free coins um i don't plan to at least initially my play on these coins are to wait until the summer and when the new design comes out hopefully i'll be lucky and fortunate enough to get some of the new design um, but we'll, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. So, um, but again, so silver, you know, silver's trading spot price 26, 23, and I'm paying $73 for a coin. Uh, but the proofs, they're on circulated proofs and they hold collector value, especially on a proof. That's the highest quality coin that you can purchase as a proof. And they're already selling for twice what I paid for them three and a half weeks ago. If I wanted to resell it, I could. And, and make a profit on that. All right, so back to the markets. We have the Dow is still down 33, is up 33 points. NASDAQ getting slammed again, down 304. And the S&P 500 is down 32 points. So another uh, solid, solid red day in the market. Um, some of the airlines I've been looking at, if you want to take a look at Boeing, Boeing is actually up 603. They got some orders on Monday from United Airlines. And so, of course, you know that Southwest flies nothing but Boeing aircraft. Um, but what Boeing did today, was, which was interesting, 
is there's something that the FAA allows other manufacturers to do. And other manufacturers are allowed to point out what they consider a safety issue with another aircraft. So what Boeing did was they came out and said, hey, the Airbus Neo, um, I think it's a 321 series or whatever it is. They said that in order to get longer range than 740, 737 max, what they're doing is typically airliners put the wing, the fuel in the wings. Well, what Airbus is doing is they're now putting fuel tanks in the cargo area of the fuselage directly under the passengers. Okay. So Boeing pointed out that there's greater risk of that for a fire. And uh, I don't know if they're trading, if they're trading up today on that. But uh, it, it, it's been a somewhat interesting stock, to say the least. It is something that you can trade. It does have a lot of volatility in it. Um, but coming from November at 149 up to 228 has been a really, really nice run. Again, everything looks good on this. Everything looks good on this. What are they going to get back to? Well, they were 340 or 440-something pre-pandemic. Back in February of 19. They topped out at $443 right before the pandemic. $346, I was right. <coughs> Get some water. Stay hydrated. So uh, $346 at that range there. And uh, there was some, I actually made some money over here. And I made some money on Boeing coming back over on, on this one here as well. I haven't traded it in a little while. Might look at it again. But again, it, it's, been a, it's been a really good stock to own off of the off of the bottom so they're up two and a half percent today in a down market they're carrying some of the dow being in the in the green today uh love southwest airlines my favorite airline to fly uh i paid the extra for the early bird all leather seats all boeing aircraft i like boeings i will not fly united or american i'm exactly six feet tall and uh i don't like my knees Hitting the front of the of the uh, of the seat in front of me on American and United if you're in economy, not a pleasant experience. And they fly Airbuses, and I just don't like the incessant whine of the engines on an Airbus. Um, but it, it's uh, so that's why I prefer Southwest. Um, Delta, Delta actually has the oldest fleet in the country. They finally retired their MD-83s, I think. So when McDonnell Douglas was sold out, and uh, Boeing originally called it for a short time the 717, and uh, Delta was would buy all these MD aircraft from American Airlines and all around the world. They're flying 30, 35-year-old airplanes up until right before the pandemic. And so they have the oldest fleet in the country. I, I've taken some flights on Delta. I had one where I posted on social media, duct tape literally duct tape on the side of the paneling along the window because I like to sit by the window and uh, and uh, but they also fly airbuses as well they don't care what they fly they don't care about their fleet being the same from a maintenance issue um, but really good service on Delta I do enjoy flying them um, so that they are they are a pretty good airline as far as that goes um, Alaska Air Group Alaska Airlines also Loves the 737 Max, just like Southwest does. And so, they're again, they're also in a nice upswing, too. I like Alaska Airlines, too. Uh, they're, they're a good little airline. Um, not even not even little anymore. And they fly a lot in the west, and they'll fly all the way out of Chicago. They'll fly up to Alaska. Uh, Southwest is now flying to Hawaii, although I don't know if those flights had been canceled or, or reopened yet. I believe they have, but... There's huge goofball lockdowns in Hawaii. They, you know, the whole islands are a tourist area, and uh, they don't seem to want tourists right now um, based on what's going on. But I guess that's their choice as a state. Okay, um, so Alaska Airlines is up today 1.39%, not as much as Boeing, being up 2.5%. Delta. It's United Airlines. Uh, UAL. You know, all the airlines getting a little pop here. And, and that could be on the news that both Texas and Mississippi yesterday announced that they are going back to, right now, immediately, 100% openings, don't have to wear a mask. They're just done with it. And where that still comes into play 
is that um, you know President Biden issued an executive order saying that everybody should wear a mask. What some of you may not realize is that that only applies on federal property or if you go through airport security. Um, and then you're subject to the states because we are a republic and the state's laws should take precedent over over the uh, over the national over the national laws. Um, so we put out this order that everybody's going to wear masks. Um, well, Texas and Mississippi just said no, thank you. And there's a lot of other states that, depending on which side of the political spectrum you get into, and we're not going to talk politics on this channel at all. Um, but depending on what side you're on, there's some states that are saying, hey, we're done with the masks. There's other states saying, nope. We're still going to lock down. Um, we talked about AMC and Cinemark and uh, about the theaters opening and reopening in New York to 25% capacity, which is pretty, <coughs> pardon me, which was pretty good. Um, so the airlines, again, those are those are doing uh, pretty good there too. And AAL, American Airlines Group, are going to be up too. They're, ooh, they're up a little bit more, 76 cents at three, three, um, of 3.5 percent so as the as the country starts to open up again people are been going stir crazy inside their houses you know today there's a sunny day where i live um you know it's roughly almost 55 58 degrees i think is the high for today um you know so people are going to want to start getting outside it's springtime they want to get outside start their gardens start their traveling start their camping start their vacations all that stuff as that starts to come back into play, airline stocks, travel stocks, things like that. The only caveat to that that I could see having an issue are some of the cruise cruise ship industries. Because a lot of them have canceled cruises uh, through, you know, through the summertime almost. Um, but, they're, you know, even Carnival is up 28%. But, look, you know, look at this. Never really recovered, right? Never really recovered off the bottom. Versus a stock like Boeing. Actually, I take that back. I was wrong. Um, if I if I am wrong, I'll admit it and get right to it. But you know, it's it's, it's interesting that that Boeing is showing um, as well. One second. Okay, so Boeing is again up almost 2.7 percent, up six dollars. All right, so we've got about a half an hour left, and I hope you enjoyed the unboxing that I did on the on the precious metal coins that were delivered today. I was I was waiting for the UPS guy to show up, and uh, he showed up promptly. Hey, if you get packages from UPS, here, here's something else too. Um, I'm going to show you something. I'm not going to show you mine because I'm not logged in on this on this browser. Um, but UPS does something really cool, and it, it's almost like your Amazon Prime too. All right, select a region. I did. Oh, oh, I got to come over here and choose U.S. I guess. Ooh, we can go Mexico English, Mexico Espanol, Canada Francais, Canada English. I think we'll go United States English. We'll try that one. Okay, they do something where, um, I forget what it's called. I'm hoping that they'll show it on here. But if you don't have this, page not found, what? What the heck? Hold on. I must have clicked on something wrong. It's spinning up here. So it isn't me. It's the internet. And I don't know if it's called my UPS or let's see. Um, I don't even know what. Page not found. Awesome. To the tracking track package okay um i think i think it's like i want to say it's my ups and i'm not going to log in here 
Um, but let me see. Let me go into my other website. Here we go. I think I can click on this and I think I can show you on my phone. I can't because it's already been delivered, but I believe it's my UPS. And the reason what you want to you want to sign up for my UPS is it will show you when they're in, when they're in your neighborhood. So I also get my groceries from Amazon Prime. And when I get my groceries from Amazon Prime, it, one thing about Amazon Prime groceries, which I've been doing for over a year now, uh, when the whole pandemic started, that's when I got into that. If you sign up for Amazon Prime or if you get Amazon Prime, even if you don't have Prime, if you order $35 of groceries, delivery is free. So if you're looking at Safeway, Albertsons, Publix, Fred Meyer, Meyer, whatever you, you do your pickup of food from, Albertsons, etc., if you get it from Amazon, you can go, if, if it's available in your market, in a lot of areas, it's still not available. I'm fortunate enough where I live that it is available where I'm at. But if you do Amazon, if you do Amazon groceries and you get it $35, your deliveries are free. You get to pick a two-hour window and you can actually track it and ship it like an Amazon package and you'll know how many stops away that driver is from your house. And that comes that comes with a with a package delivery or something like that, where if you're worried about where it's at. The other thing is if you are not home and if you were not aware of this yet, but if you go to a regular office for work or a company or wherever you go for work and you have an Amazon delivery, when you check out of your Amazon cart, do yourself a favor. If you're not gonna be at home, don't leave it on your porch, okay? Use an Amazon locker. Amazon lockers are everywhere now, and you can choose to pick it up there. You simply take your phone, and you and you and you you basically take your phone and you scan it, and uh, and it just boom, and then you just opens up the locker. You grab your package and you and you go. And if you can't pick it up until the next day, I think they hold it there for two and a half or three days. You have to pick up your package. If you don't pick it up by then. I, I guess I guess they send it, send it back to the to uh, wherever, wherever you bought it from, but it, it's a great service that they have. Also on Amazon, they will default the tip for the driver for five dollars. If you want to raise that up, you can simply edit it. That actually doesn't get charged until the following day, so you have about 24 hours afterwards. So if you get good service or they broke a bunch of your eggs or something like that, um, and don't be afraid that if you get something of lower quality. Like one time I got bananas that were basically already ripe the next morning. They were already turning brown. I'm not going to eat six bananas the second day, right? It doesn't make any sense. You can actually get a refund on those on those bananas and just explain that. Every once in a while, they will send you extra stuff. I know that um, I was talking to, to one of my sons and they had sent him unsolicited a whole bunch of hot dogs. Never ordered them. He contacted them. Hey, do you want these back? And they're like, no, keep them. Um, multiple times I've ordered one of something and I've gotten two of them. Whether it's a gravy packet, I think the last time it happened was Bernays sauce for filet mignons. I think they sent me two of them. So, um, so it, very interesting what happens sometimes with, with with deliveries. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look. We've got about 25 minutes for the market here. Bitcoin again. Uh, oops, let me go back over. We're gonna look at five minute charts probably for for the remainder of of the of the market here so we get sentiment and take a look at what's going to happen and what might happen in the after hours so again we had the start of trading today as far as um midnight okay so cryptocurrencies like bitcoin and ethereum will um start their clock for the day at midnight so since midnight it's been up five percent and so it's a uh, Bitcoin is up twenty four hundred dollars per Bitcoin, and Bitcoin again is not a physical item. It is um, runs on a, what's called a blockchain. And Ethereum is up one hundred and ten dollars to fifteen ninety eight, trying to stay above sixteen hundred. Um, the Dow has now turned negative. Let's 
So we're now down 11.7 points on the Dow. S&P 500 is down 39 points, so not looking like a good ending of the day. And that could have been on some of the stimulus as well, inflation. People are worried about that as well. And if you take a look at the QQQ. Down about 2.6%. Um, actually, Compax. Crazy. A very, very tech ugly day. So if you're in techs, don't panic. You know, some of this stuff might bounce back. But again, the stimulus, their goal, they're not in a big hurry on this. Today's March 3rd. All the unemployment benefits, as far as I'm ending, are going to be are scheduled to end on March 14th. So looking at a calendar, you, which is a Sunday because the week starts on a Monday. So they're down here. That's when the extended unemployment benefits end. They have it in the stimulus to increase the extra unemployment on top of what the state gives you. Okay, They're going to increase that an additional $300 right now. That's going to jump up to $400. And I believe the reading of the bill says that that's going to go through, I want to say August, I believe. I'll have to look that up and we'll carry that on stream, the specifics once they pass it. So the House already passed their ver their version. So what happened was the House passed their version. The U.S. Senate is looking to pass their version. Then what they're going to do is they're going to go to conference, which means they get together and they hammer out the differences between the two bills. And then once they agree on that, then it's voted on again really, really quickly. It's a done deal at that point anyway. And then it goes to the president to sign, and then the bill is the bill is signed, and then it's enacted. And this one they're talking about 1.9 trillion. A lot of the moderates, both on the Republican side, most Republicans I think, and the moderate Democrats like uh, Steve Manchin uh, out of West Virginia, from the Senate side, they want to trim that bill down. The, the the problem with these stimulus bills is not that they're helping people out; they are, but the actual benefit of dollars that goes into your pocket or my pocket or our loved ones, our families, our coworkers' pockets is very small in the overall bill. They put so much pork in this stuff. Um, the last stimulus bill had tons of stuff for other countries. And that's all fine and dandy, but you know we are teetering on the edge of a recession. We are teetering on the edge of a depression, whether we all realize that or want to admit it or not. Um, the money supply, we talked about, we talked about that before with the, uh, the St. Louis Federal Reserve. We take St. Louis and take a look at the Fred. And you know, they can't They cannot keep just printing money. They can't do it. And yet, um, they do. Here's the M2, M1. And we'll go to the new one. Give me a second. Look at this. December 2019. M1 money stock, money supply, 
January. This is a monthly they report this, so we don't have the Februarys yet. 18105. So from 30, what did I say? 30, 35 something? 3978 in December. 18105. That cannot be sustained. And I'm going to bookmark that bad boy. And this is called uh, Fred M1. Let's go uh, M2. Oops, there we go. And go to the new one. And I'm going to bookmark that. Okay, Dow is trying to climb back. And I did that because as soon as I do this, I can go like this, and boom, I have my chart. So Dow right now is up eight points or so. The S&P 500 is down 35 points, and the NASDAQ Composite is down 308. So again, you have all these, all this red over here. Again, you know things like energy. Energy is up quite a bit today. I know my U.S. oil is doing very well. Financial is up quite a bit as well and um, capital markets anything financial related seems to be going up and the industrials are up as well things like Boeing all the airlines are up today all the cruise ships are up today Texas and Mississippi opened so now you have other opportunities for um, for the comebacks to start to happen as maybe 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 we're on the back end of this and and that's the, that's the caveat there if we're on the back end of this and if things are going to get better and the economy is going to open up and the country is going to open up, hence the world's going to open up, people can travel again, they can go outside, they can socialize, go to restaurants full time, everything's open and back to what will be considered the new normal, um, the stock market's pulling back. Inflation is going up. Mortgage rates going up. Ten-year treasuries going up. Ten-year treasuries go up. Inflation goes up markets go down that's what history tells us so be careful hedge your plays hedge your hedge your uh portfolios again this is not financial advice whatsoever this is only my opinion strictly for education and entertainment so if you like the stream hit the like hit the follow maybe even subscribe and help me out and if you want to make a comment over on youtube or even in the chat here on twitch because uh, i am streaming to both twitch and youtube um, it will help the algorithms if you place a comment that, hey, you like the the, the, the stream or that you liked that uh, an hour into or about a half hour into 35 minutes into the stream. I did my unboxing and my unboxing of what did we get? Oh, yeah. We got 12 U.S. silver coins and uh, delivered today by UPS and three. Platinum coins, one ounce platinum coins. Each of these now cost $1,695 each. So um, how did I buy those and why did I buy those? Several weeks ago, I bought a little AMC stock. And I wrote it from basically $12 a share. I held it for like, I held it overnight and about, two, about an hour into the opening the following day, I sold it at I think fourteen dollars and some odd cent, fourteen twenty-eight, and I think I got it at twelve oh three. And the profits I made off of that, I took every dollar and basically put it into precious metals, into a hard what's called a hard asset. Hard assets are things like real estate. Hard asset are things like precious metals. So you have silver, you have platinum, you have palladium. Um, silver, silver right now. There's you can't get silver in a lot of places. If you if you go to AP Max, which is one of the uh, larger bullion dealers that are out there, and you click on silver and you say, hey, just show me what, what, what you guys have to sell on the secondary market, and you view all products, watch this. You're going to have alerts. Well, some of them are available, some of the older ones. So you don't get to pick the year. Random year. Random year. If I said, show me... Uh, American Eagles or actually you know what it, it's the bars the bars oops here we go silver 
bars by weight. And if I look at silver and I say, hey, you know what? I'm interested in buying a one ounce silver bar. What do you got for me, AP Max? And AP Max will come back with pre sale, pre sale, top pick, top pick. Uh, one ounce silver bar, one through 19, you're paying $32.92 an ounce. So each one ounce bar, $32.92. So again, if you come back over here and you look at silver and you say, okay, what is silver at? 2620. So you take 2620 and you turn around and you divide that into their one ounce silver price of a one ounce bar of 3292. And that tells you that, and you do a minus one, 20% premium. So the bullion dealers are selling silver 20% over what the spot price is for just a one ounce little bar of silver. Okay. So $32.92. But a lot of what they're selling. Alert me, those are all sold out. You can't even get them. You can get random stuff um, from them depending on what it is. And if you look at uh, by weight, and if you go into the, what is it, the 100 ounce bars? You know, again, 32, 20% premium on just about anything that's silver related, okay? So buyer beware, be careful. Um, silver is up, has been up a, a little bit, but it, you know, twenty six dollars and nineteen cents or so. Platinum down a little bit, eleven seventy seven. Palladium, twenty three sixty. Palladium, rhodium, platinum. Those are all used in things like catalytic converters. So uh, careful on those. All right, let's take a look at what's happened towards the end of the day here. We're going to go back into the five minute chart, so we get a look at the whole day. And because uh, we know what happened right here on the open. KMPH, again, they announced a brand new drug that was re, uh, approved by the FDA for ADHD. And so that was uh, some good news for them. Rocket Mortgage fell off of the planet and they fell down from space. And they were down 32%. Um, pretty much immediately on the open this morning. Came right down. Sold off, sold off, continued to sell off during the day. As most stocks did. Again, the only things that are up today is you have uh, financials up. You have um, you have financials up. You have industrials up. You have energy that's up. And everything else, anything tech related, mostly is, is down. So we have uh, the GameStop. Stayed up. Look at that nice little little push at the end there. Threw up five dollars today, one twenty three. So that seems to be making a move, and uh, and it's got a nice little nice little chart here of where it's going. Don't know where it's going to end up, but at least short term, it looks like it is. It has been going up again, and a lot of people like to own that. AMC again. AMC closed on Friday at eight dollar and one cent. So if you look at the pullback yesterday, if you look at the pullback today. And since Friday, it closed at 801, jumped up almost nine dollars, 904 or so, pulled back a little bit, still holding at 862. We'll see what happens at options expiration for this week. The next big options expiration is the monthlies, which are March 19th. So again, stimulus. Um, and looking uh, real quick here, the S&P 500 is just taking a dump. Let me see if, if there's. Uh, what news came out here? Hold on a second. So good size sell off here at the end of the day. Um, so AMC down 29 cents. You know, look at that. It just a, took a 1% drop there, a 2% drop. And so we have um, and the other one was Rocket. Look at Palantir. Palantir's down. Rocket down 22%. Tesla down $30. You know, $656. That's now even lower than what I sold it for. I sold that thing at $663, I think, and I missed the next run up because um, I was waiting for it to pull back. So maybe, maybe, maybe some Tesla. Um, 
So Dow is down 38 points. NASDAQ is down 318 points. S&P 500 is down over 38 points. So be careful here at the end of the day. If you're looking for a pop, uh, you might, might get a little bit of a pop here right as we approach close here. We got eight minutes left. I like to see on things like, uh, let's see if there's some buy side imbalances that are out there. Uh, not there, not yet. Check AMC. Here we go. Another trade imbalance on AMC. So AMC has, so yesterday they had 14 million shares. No. Um, 14 million shares sold in the aftermarket at like 893. And that's why it opened up higher on AMC today. Now there's a, <laughs> there's a sell side imbalance on AMC today for 84,000 shares. Uh, but that's not, that's not, that's not a big deal. Uh, so that will close a little bit lower today, lower today as well. Um, no news there. Uh, let me go back over here. Here we go. Okay, about seven minutes left in the market. And a little bit of a sell-off here towards the end, huh? So again, Dow down 65. We'll take a look. This is the same as the bottom chart. And you see the VIX on the bottom going up as the S&P declines. So right about seven minutes left in the market here. We'll go back over to our other chart. Again, everything's just getting clobbered here at the end. Here's the S&P 500 down 44 points. So we have the Dow down 75, NASDAQ down 339. Hmm. Three forty-three on the Nasdaq. So all that tech that had built in all those profits that hopefully y'all already took. I still have some that are out there though, but I also have some money in cash too. Um, so we're gonna be—I'll be doing a little bit of research tonight and tomorrow morning again. So we're gonna be ending the stream here in a little while. Um, just want to let you know we, we will be back at nine a.m. a half an hour before market opens tomorrow morning. We will be back on this. And so we'll be looking at the pre-market and see what's going on, any news that happened overnight in precious metals markets, crypto markets, and U.S. stock markets. So, um, again, Bitcoin and Ethereum are the ones for today that have been doing very well. So at least something in my portfolio is up today. Um, Ethereum is up. Oil is up $1.55 a barrel. So that means U.S. oil ETF which buys oil futures is up a nice another 2.78%. Uh, Again, U.S. oil was a $100 um, ETF a while back earlier last year, early early 2020. So there you have it, folks. Look at that. 341, it's just continuing. So I think on the... Uh, the VIX, 8% change on the VIX. So you have the Dow down 0.25%, down 75 points. You have the NASDAQ down 2.55%, which is down 340. 
And you have the S&P down 44 points, which is down 1.13%. So uh, definitely something worth checking out and looking into. Just a ugly day in the markets. We need a green one. Maybe tomorrow will be a green day. Let's all hope that Thursday will be a green day, will be a green day. Hey, maybe we'll, maybe we'll find something from green day. Now we don't want that because then we'll get copyright strike against us. So that won't work. Out. <laughs> that won't work. Um, the music I'm using is actually a subscription service I use. It's called Epidemic Sound. And it basically means that it's mostly original music and they're basically copyright free for me because I pay for them so I can stream them. So you won't be hearing any Phil Collins in the air tonight or anything like that uh, on the channel or uh, Queen Bohemian Rhapsody or anything of that, of that nature. Um, but hopefully this stuff is, is okay for you. And if you like the music I chose, Hey, put something down in the comment section. Let me know. Okay. All right. So we got about two minutes until the close here. Still red, red, red. You can get a little bounce here at the end. Looks like it. No. So this could continue to sell off in the aftermarket too. And companies like, um, you know, Nvidia down $22 a share on 4% greater than the market where the overall NASDAQ's down 2.57%. So it's just an ugly, ugly day unless you were in energy, industrials, Airlines did well today. Cruise ships did well today. Anything energy related did well today. Um, so there, there's a lot of good stuff that's happening out there. You just got to find out where that where that stuff is at. And look, again, one last look at the heat map. Most things are red except for financials and energy over here and the banks. And then uh, your, your industrials are doing are doing well also. Aerospace doing well. So there you go. All right, one minute. One minute until the bell. Maybe I should get a bell. I think I'll go on Amazon and get myself a little bell. i ring the bell when the markets close. Right? 15 seconds left. To where we end up. Uh, I want this one. I wanted this one. And you'll see down here this will change to market closed. And there we go. Markets now closed. So we ended up down 361 on the NASDAQ. SP was down 50 points. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average, huge drop at the end, down to 119. And the Dow was fighting with being up throughout the day. And uh, they, they were up and they ended up closing down on the day. So um, look at where they were. This is the line. They were mostly up most of the day. Then sell off at the end. So into the aftermarket, careful. Watch your, uh, watch your companies, watch your stocks. Um, I don't know if there were any other buy imbalances on some of the meme stocks. Uh, no news on GME. Again, a small sell side imbalance of 84,000 shares on AMC. Uh, Rocket did not have any of those, but Rocket Rocket got hammered today. Hammered, down 30%. So if you didn't sell your Rocket yesterday when you should have, which is the sell indicator way up here. You could have sold it after the first run up, bought it back down here, and then sold it again up there. Whew. Down she goes. Because then look, you got sell indicator here. And let me zoom that in a little bit. Sell indicator all the way up here. $40, call it. Let's say you missed that one and you got on the next candle. So you're at $40. You sell it at $40. Well, when's the next buy come in? 
Nice buy didn't come in until over here. <laughs> Three candles later on the five minutes. So 15 minutes later, had a sell indicator and it's been in a sell sell mode since then. So, um, oops. So looking at the change percentages, uh, you had a lot of stuff in the red rocket, big loser on the day, workhorse, Tesla, Nvidia, AMC, AMD down, Palantir, Ford, Microsoft, Intel. And then the gainers start at the bottom, KMPH. Where'd they end up at? 1347. So they consolidate. This is actually. That looks really good for them. When's the last time they were in that range? Two thousand nineteen, and back in July, and August. So they're back to their August levels. So what that says is that look look at this volume. Now that that's on the weekly though, so don't don't freak out and say hey that looks great. It does. But you also have some volatility in there. So you got to have patience and maturity to trade this. Because it is all the way right here. So in the aftermarket, I get those as well. Um, it's down seven cents in the aftermarket. Let's see. Uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is still trading right now. Hold on that 50. Again, that same 50,600 level. Ethereum hanging out. I think we said 1575 on Ethereum. And then probably another buy at 1450 or so. If it, if it drops down to that level, I'd like to see this get above 1600 and stay there. And some of the other ones after hours, let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla's down 80 cents in the aftermarket. Palantir, flat. I don't think they trade aftermarket. NVIDIA, up 63 cents. Well, when you're down $24, being up 63 cents is not necessarily a good sign. Again, the aftermarket just started. So if I go back into the five minute, I can turn that on and, and see what happens in the aftermarket as well. Okay. So I believe that's going to do it for us today. And again, we're going to be back a half an hour before the market opens. If you're on Twitch, I do have those streams scheduled so you can get reminders on them as well. And I'll try and post something on YouTube as well. I think it allows you to do that, but I think they call them premieres or something. So I'll have to look into, into that over on, over on that platform. But we've been live here for an hour and 39 minutes. And we were live this morning for, I think, a couple of two and a half hours. So from a half hour before open until uh, two hours after it opens, so we do a two and a half hour program in the morning. And then we do an hour and about hour to a half to uh, hour and 45 minutes in the afternoon to get to catch that last power hour, see what's going on. Power hour was big today because we saw a huge drop off uh, in, in, in the S&P. Um, if you take a look at where it was at, you know, the last hour or so, you know, basically dropped off quite significantly. And that was uh, not, not fun to watch. Um, but again, not, not all bad news on the day. So if you were in the airlines, if you were in financials, if you were in anything uh, energy related, did really well. Uh, where'd that U.S. oil end up at? U.S. oil. Saved my bacon today. Um, up $1.07. 2.67% and it's up like five cents in the in the aftermarket trading session. So aftermarket is going to go for four hours. So four hours from six minutes ago um, is where the opportunity that if your broker allows it, you can buy and sell stocks at that time. You cannot do options in the aftermarket or the pre-market. You can only do stocks. And if you're on a cryptocurrency exchange, something like um, Kraken or Binance or Coinbase um, or Bittrex, you can trade Ethereum and Bitcoin and other coins on different platforms 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Those markets never close because they are worldwide. And so that will do it for today. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you. Hit that follow, hit that like, hit the subscription button. 
click the bell for notifications click on all and you'll be notified of our next stream we'll see you tomorrow morning at right about a half an hour before the market take care everyone have a great day we'll see you tomorrow Thank you.